Hey there beautiful moms to be, welcome back to What Mommy Loves. Today we're diving into the final stretch of this incredible journey, the third trimester. Those last few months leading up to meeting your little one are filled with so much anticipation, change and preparation. So let's explore together what you can expect during this phase of pregnancy. Let's dive right in. But I went Before we begin, here's a little disclaimer to say that I'm a mom of two and the information I share in this content is based off of my personal experience and also my research. Always consult your healthcare provider throughout your pregnancy journey. Here are some of the physical changes to expect during the third trimester. As your baby grows, the added weight puts pressure on your spine which leads to increased backaches. Your body's ligaments also loosen to prepare for labor, contributing to the discomfort. I remember when I was pregnant in my third trimester, I had to go see a physiotherapist recommended by the NHS because my backache was so painful and it affected a lot of things that I was doing. So I had to correct my posture. So my physiotherapist recommended that I bend my knees and keep my back straight when I try to lift or pick things up instead of bending my back and to also avoid heavy lifting. Other physical changes like frequent bathroom trips happens because of the pressure your baby puts on your bladder and you also start to have nesting instincts in the sense that moms will start you know nesting preparing for their baby it might involve organizing cleaning and setting up the nursery you will also be feeling breathless during this period as a result of your baby's growth and also your uterus expanding this can cause shortness of breath at later stages in your third trimester you will also be experiencing swelling some women have swelling on their feet or hands and this is due to increased fluid retention. Try elevating your legs as much as possible and stay hydrated. You might also experience pelvic discomfort at this period of your pregnancy. I also visited my physiotherapist when I experienced this. Finding comfortable sleeping position can become challenging, but always try to sleep on your side, never on your back during the third trimester. Practice contractions, also known as Braxton Hicks contractions, will become more frequent during this trimester. They are simply irregular and don't lead to labor, so you don't have to worry about this. However, it might become more noticeable as your due date nears. Your baby's development will hit some key milestones during the third trimester. They are developing fat layers that help regulate body temperature outside the womb. And also organs such as the lungs are reaching maturity, getting ready to take their first breath. The brain is also developing rapidly at this point. By now, your little one is practicing movements. You might feel them kicking, squirming or even having hiccups. Babies at this stage can perceive light and dark, responding to external stimuli like sounds and touch. You can speak to your baby and give them frequent touches. As your due date approaches, your midwife will be able to tell you the position of your baby. Your baby will begin to shift into a head down position in preparation for birth. By this stage, your baby has distinct facial features and if you're lucky enough to get an ultrasound, you might catch a glimpse of their adorable little face. Here are some common signs that labor might be approaching during the third trimester. You might be experiencing Braxton Hicks contractions, also known as practice contractions, during this period. And this will become more frequent. And it's just a sign to show you that your labor is drawing closer. They are usually irregular and nothing to worry about, but they also progress into true labor. You might also experience lightning. And lightning happens when your baby drops lower into your pelvis. This movement called lightning can relieve pressure on your diaphragm, making it easier to breathe and it's also a sign that labor might be near. You might experience cervical changes whereby your cervix might start to soften, dilate which means open or thin out as your body prepares for labor. Increased vaginal discharge or the passing of the mucus plug which is a thick discharge from the cervix can indicate labor approaching. 
you might experience increased discomfort in your lower back, abdomen or pelvis as your baby moves into the birth position. Another sign that indicates labor approaching is when your water breaks. The rupture of the amniotic sac resulting in a gush or trickle of fluid can be a sign that labor is imminent. However, this doesn't always happen as dramatically as portrayed in movies. I personally never experienced my water breaking, so I suppose my midwife must have sorted that out. Always remember that all of these signs vary from woman to woman and not all signs necessarily mean that labor is about to start immediately. If you're unsure about anything or you're experiencing any concerning symptoms, it's essential that you contact your healthcare provider for guidance. Preparing for your big day is key to feeling confident and ready. So here's what you can do to be prepared. Number one, pack a hospital bag with essentials like comfortable clothing, toiletries, important documents and items for your baby. Having it ready in advance can ease any last minute stress like what I went through in my second pregnancy. Don't get me wrong, I had packed my hospital bag, but I forgot to pack nappies and I was procrastinating this for the longest time until I was in the delivery room getting ready to give birth when I realized that I hadn't packed nappies. Luckily for me, the midwife was able to offer me nappies and I also got the free Emma's Diary pack, which they give every pregnant woman I think and so yeah that was support for me at that period. So don't forget nappies they are very important. Number two consider creating a birth plan outlining your preferences for labor and delivery. Some women prefer having a pool birth while others prefer not to. Discuss this with your healthcare provider to ensure it aligns with your expectations. Number three is to stay calm as much as possible. As your due date approaches, practice relaxation techniques such as deep breathing, meditation or prenatal yoga. Surround yourself with positive support to stay calm and relaxed. Taking care of yourself during these final weeks is crucial for your well-being and comfort. Use pillows as much as possible. You can use pillows for support while sleeping or for your back if your back aches. Apply warm compresses to ease back pains and consider maternity support belts to alleviate pelvic discomfort. Establish a good bedtime routine and avoid caffeine close to bedtime. Always stay hydrated and consume nutritious meals and engage in gentle exercises like walking or prenatal yoga to boost energy levels and promote physical health. You can also seek emotional support by talking to your partner or your friends and also consider relaxation techniques such as mindfulness or journaling to reduce stress and anxiety. Let's not forget your partner. Your partner's involvement during this phase is incredibly valuable. Here's how they can offer support and bond with the baby before birth. Encourage your partner to attend prenatal appointments with you and actively participate in discussions about the pregnancy, birth plan and postpartum care. Encourage your partner to bond with your baby by talking to your belly, reading stories to your baby or singing to the bump. Feeling the baby's movement or using a fetal Doppler to hear the heartbeat can strengthen the connection you have with your partner. Be open about your feelings and concerns, allowing your partner to provide emotional support wherever possible and reassurance. This involvement fosters a sense of togetherness and strengthens your bond as a couple and parents-to-be. And ladies, you know how time-consuming it is to put together that cot bed from Ikea or even the wardrobe from Ikea. So leave all of that DIY to your partner. Your partner can assist with practical tasks like preparing the nursery, packing the hospital bag and taking care of household chores, easing some of the load off your shoulders. So that's it for this video. But before we wrap up, I'd love to hear from you. Share your pregnancy experiences, your thoughts or any tips you have for fellow moms-to-be in the comment section below. Your stories and your insights might resonate with someone out there on this beautiful journey through pregnancy. And remember, if you found this video helpful, 
don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more content on pregnancy, parenting tips and much more. You can also check out my previous videos and my podcast on all podcast platforms, What Mummy Loves Podcast. I wish you all the best in your pregnancy journey. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure you like this video, comment down below and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next one. Have a safe pregnancy.